So I have my domain joined Windows 2019 server set up. Go to server manager, manage, add roles and features. Just going to tick to skip this page by default. Click next. Uh, next. And we'll install it locally on the server. Click next. Now, FTP is a function of a web server or IIS. So select that. Click to add the additional features. And just click all the way through to role services. And scroll down to the bottom and there you'll see FTP server now if you select the top level one it will install the FTP service I'm also going to tick FTP extensibility although we're not actually going to use any features of that I'm going to use any ASP or anything but I'm just going to add all the roles in click next and click install now obviously for the purpose of the video I have sped this up somewhat. So that's us installed. Installation succeeded. Now, normally, there'd be something extra to do up here if you're adding a role, but for adding IIS and FTP, there's nothing further to be done. So if I jump across onto my domain controller now, what I'm going to do is create a security group that I'm going to allow FTP access to. A standard global security group is fine. And into that group, I'm going to put my domain user. And I'm also going to add the domain admin here, although in practicality, in the production network, you probably wouldn't have a domain administrator in here. But just in case I have any bother with permissions or anything later on. During testing, so back on my FTP server, I'm going to create a folder here on the root of the C drive. In production, you probably put it on a separate data drive, but I want to call it FTP data. And because my users are going to have to be able to write information to this, I'm going to add them in on the ACL for this folder. And I'm going to grant them write. By default, they will get read. I'm just going to add in the write rights. So now to configure IIS, if you open up administrative tools, and we're looking for information services IIS manager. Let's just maximise that and get us a bit more real estate so I can see what's going on. So expand the server name, go to sites, right click sites and select add an FTP site. We give the site a sensible name. set its physical path to the folder that we just created. Remember that's on the right of the C drive. FTP data. Okay. Next. And I'm going to tick allow SSL but I'm not going to have require SSL. And then because I've even mentioned SSL I've got a select self signed certificate. So Obviously that will error if you don't trust that certificate, but you can still use good old fashioned basic. Specify a user or group. And I'm going to put FTP users in here and give them read and write. So remember, if you're using an external FTP client, unless you trust the certificate, you will get an error. Unless you use plain old fashioned port 21. FTP. Or you trust the certificate, of course. That's my FTP site set up. So let's make sure that the Windows firewall 
is going to allow FTP traffic. You can see it's turned on 434 ports. And the network card for my server is in the domain profile because it's domain joined. Scroll down, come past it to uh, FTP server. And you can see there that it's enabled for all three profiles. So if we just look at the advanced settings for the firewall, you can see what gets turned on by default. So if we look at the inbound rules, you should see three separate rules for FTP. There we go. Normal FTP traffic in, that will be TCP port 21. You get passive FTP, which allows the random generated uh, ports that passive FTP uses, and you also see secure FTP. Now those are on secures on port 990. That's good old normal FTP on port 21. And those are the random ports that passive FTP uses. So that could be any port above 1024. That's why you need a decent stateful firewall in front to intercept that traffic and open the right ports dynamically. So let's give it a I'm jumped across back onto my domain controller here. So let's just give it a test from on the network and make sure it works first. The fact that it's prompting me is a good sign. And obviously there's nothing in there at the minute, so let's just dump a text file in there and make sure that that works fine. It appears to have done so. I've now successfully uploaded a file. Just, just prove it's not smoke and mirrors. Jump back on my FTP server and in my FTP data, hopefully I should see that text file. There you go. So now we know that it's working. So the ACID test is to test FTP site from outside. So here's a host I've got that's sat outside the firewall. I'm using FileZilla FTP client. Now remember to use plain FTP or secure unless you trust the certificate. Click connect, put your credentials in. And hopefully I should see that text document that I uploaded earlier. There it is. And that's working fine and it's tested from outside. And that's just done. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.peaknetlive.com.